Welcome to Airgun Action. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the BSA R12 CLX Pro. But before that, Rich Saunders is heading out to make a mixed bag, setting his sights on rabbits, pigeons and corvids. Well, I'm on the border between two of my permissions this evening. In front of me is quite a large sheep farm and behind me is an even bigger fruit farm. And in between on the border um, is a copse with quite a large uh, rookery in it. And the rooks and also wood pigeons use the copse as a bit of a staging post to launch raids onto the, uh, the fruit plants that have just been laid out. And they cause an awful lot of damage and the rooks also poop on everything, all the equipment and what have you. So uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck myself into this farmyard junk here and hopefully pick off one or two rooks and pigeons as they come into roost. Well, there's quite a breeze here today and um, that rook was swaying around on the tree quite a little bit and I just had to time my shot for a twig to get out of the way and to get a clear shot through the, the remaining twigs. But I caught him right under the ribs and he went straight down, hit the floor right underneath the tree. The sheep are, are lambing on the farm on the far side there. To be honest, the rooks aren't usually a, much of a problem with lambs. They're not as aggressive as crows. They will have a go at a lamb, but they're not as aggressive as crows. But there are quite a few magpies around here and um, they will attack a newborn lamb. They'll peck its eyes and what have you if they get the chance. And there's quite a few I've noticed around here. So if I get a chance with a magpie, I will give it a go. Well, that wasn't a magpie, that was a rook, another rook. Um, I spotted one up in a tree, but he was quite obscured with, uh, with twigs. And I was just trying to work out if I could get a shot. And then two or three more bundled in, caused a lots of jostling around on the branch. And then one of the newcomers was a much clearer shot. And he even leaned out a little bit to give, him, give me even more of his chest to aim at. And uh, yeah, knocked him straight down as well. Well, magpies are every bit as ruthless when it comes to attacking lambs, so I'm pleased to have got that one.
Well, that's the first pigeon in the bag. Um, again, he was being blown around on the branch and there's a twig in front of him waving around, so I had to time the shot just right. But I hit him really hard, right in the middle of the chest, and he's gone straight down. So I've just moved round to the other side of the yard, behind this yellow, whatever it is thing, because uh, I saw quite a few rooks and pigeons landing in the trees that were behind me before. So uh, yeah, hopefully get one or two more over here. Well, that was another choice of two. The first one was quite obscured by twigs, but then I managed to spot a second one that was, wasn't quite as obscured and managed to thread another pellet through, hit him in the chest, and he's gone right down to the bottom of the tree. Well, as you might have heard on the camera there, there's quite a bit of commotion from the rooks after I shot that last one. And is off on the way that caused a couple of really nosy magpies to fly in and see what was going on. And one of them paid the price. Well, that's another pigeon down. Managed to knock him off nice and cleanly and he's fallen right down to the bottom of the tree. Um, although I can still hear and see plenty of rooks flying around, none of them are landing now. They're really angry with me and they're not gonna settle. So I think I've uh, pushed my luck here now. I'm gonna go and pick up those birds that I have shot. And then the farm manager has said that he's seen some, some rabbits on the far side of the field uh, attacking some newly planted blueberry bushes. So I'm going to go over there and see if I can get one or, one or two of those as well. Right, what I'm going to do now is have a wander over to the, um, to the blueberry field. Um, good chance to talk about the gear though. The rifle is uh, a day state uh, Wolverine R, uh, it's the C type, the, the, uh, the cylinder version of the rifle. Uh, fully regulated like all the, the day states are. It's got a, tw um, a side lever 11 shot magazine because this is a, a 12 foot pound uh, 2 2 rifle. Um, on top is an MTC Cobra F1 scope, which is one of my absolute favourite scopes. I really like this scope. And then holding all of that together, the most important job of all, I think, is a set of sports match mounts. So the farm manager has said that he's seen quite a few rabbits over on this side of the farm in amongst these blueberry rows down here and they're coming from some woods and some hedgerow over the far side and just helping themselves to these blueberries so I'm just gonna have a little mooch around and see if I can find one or two
Well, I caught some uh, some movement through the uh, through the blueberries as I walked down, and and I didn't realise it, but there were two rabbits there, only about 27 or 28 metres away, and uh, hit the first one. He went straight down, nice and clean, and the second one only moved off four or five feet, so I managed to get him as well. Um, I think I'm going to leave them there in case there's any more uh, in the in the rows further down. See if I can get another one. Well, that's another one down. Um, again, I managed to see him just through the, the bushes here and uh, got around the side, only about another 25, 28 metres away, I should think. Um, he was faced away from me, and that's given him lots of squeaks to try and get him to put his head up. And he was still facing away from me. I almost took a shot, but then he just raised his head a little bit more, gave me a really clear shot. So that's another one down. I've had a good look around the farm. I haven't seen any more rabbits, to be perfectly honest. I've seen plenty of damage from rabbits, so I will be back before too long for another go. But those three rabbits, the rooks, the pigeons, and the magpies, means it's been a really productive day, and both farmers should be, should be really pleased with the results. Uh, the Wolverine C-type has performed fantastically well, hasn't missed a beat. I've not missed any shots, which for me is pretty unusual. So I think I'm gonna call it a day there, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. A brilliant mixed bag for Rich there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the BSA R12 CLX Pro. What I have here is the new BSA R12 CLX Pro. And what a beautiful air gun it is. Now this is BSA's new flagship PCP, and it certainly looks the part. This version is the black pepper laminate and it retails for £1,265. Now there's also a walnut stock option and that retails for about £50 less. Being kind on the eye is one thing, but build quality is an even more important factor. And there certainly doesn't appear to have been any skimping in that department. BSA has a really proud gun making heritage and it really does show. Now, the CLX seems to be really solidly constructed and the finish and engineering look absolutely flawless. Let's start by taking a closer look at the stock, which has been carefully crafted by Minelli. Now, it's ambidextrous, but it has quite a lot of adjustment, so you should be able to achieve an absolutely perfect fit. 
Now the butt is actually three-way adjustable and that means that apart from being able to shift it up and down, you can also tweak its angle to the left or right and that means that you can introduce some cast to the stock. The soft touch cheek piece is also height adjustable, so you shouldn't have any issues with eye scope alignment. Now, as you can see, this stock is of the thumb hole design and there's a nice large cutaway behind the pistol grip. Now that grip is really nicely contoured to set you up for the trigger and also has some tastefully styled uh, stippling to improve the grip and there are panels of that on both sides. Now I also really like the black cap and white spacer at the base of the pistol grip, which I think is a really nice touch. The same style of capping and spacer is also present at the front of the forend, uh, which also features the same stippling as the pistol grip, and that's on the underside as well as on both sides of the forend. Now, BSA has thoughtfully decided to factory fit swivel studs to the stock for accessory attachment, and that means that you don't have to take a drill to this beautiful stock to fit your own. BSA's cold hammer forged barrel is famously accurate and it comes as standard equipment on the R12 CLX Pro. Now you can see it's housed inside a sleek shroud which has a nice black anodized finish and is fitted with a matching silencer. Now this is actually uh, BSA's CCS system and that stands for Customer Configurable Shroud. Now that gives you the option of choosing whether you want to fit just the shroud, just the silencer, both or neither. Now with the full setup on as I have here, it makes for incredibly quiet shooting. The R12 has seen a lot of advancements since the R10 and one of those is a new high performance regulator. Now the action is now of a monoblock construction and above that sits 15 centimeters of dovetail scope rail. Now, as you can see, the magazine sits beneath it so it doesn't get in the way of scope mounting. As the R12 name implies, this BSA runs a 12-shot magazine and it comes supplied with two. Now, there have been a few production wobbles with these magazines in the past, but I understand that that has now been completely ironed out and the ones supplied with this gun have worked like clockwork. They are pellet friendly and the easy grip rotor makes them really easy to load. Now they also feature a really clear shot counter so you can see how many pellets you've got left and most importantly they index really smoothly. The side lever action is a key feature of this air gun. Now it's well positioned and it's got a really nice drop down handle. It even features a little indicator just beneath the magazine so you can quickly see at a glance if the gun is cocked. Now, most significantly though, it works like a dream. Quickly cocking and reloading the gun for rapid follow-up shots, whether you're plinking or out right hunting. I've always liked the trigger on the R12's predecessor and this one is equally good. Now the match type blade is really nice and it can be adjusted for height, angle and length of pull. Now the two stage trigger mechanism can also be adjusted for length and weight of the second stage. Now straight out of the box, this one was good to go. Creep free and really predictable. Now it's got quite a long first stage and that comes to a really positive stop before a short, crisp second stage break. The safety switch is nicely positioned well away from the trigger at the rear of the action. Now you can operate it with your thumb while staying in contact with the pistol grip and you simply flick it up to make the gun safe and then push it back down to the side when you're ready to take the shot. Thanks to its new regulator, the CLX Pro is a very consistent performer. Now the 177 caliber test gun was producing a muzzle energy of 11.4 foot-pounds 
with a variation of six feet per second over a string of 10 shots. And that was with BSA Gold Star pellets taken straight from the tin. Now, when it comes to keeping an eye on air reserves, there is a clearly marked gauge on the underside of the stock, and it even features a special lens which makes it easy to read from a really wide angle. Maximum fill pressure is 230 bar, and from that you can expect about 250 shots in 177 and about 280 in 22, thanks in no small part to the new regulator and that large 280cc bottle. Now the bottle is removable, but it can also be refilled in situ. All you need to do is remove the magnetic cap that protects the inlet and then plug in with the supplied quick fill probe. As I own a BSA R10, which is a very accurate air gun, I was expecting really good things from the R12, so I wasn't disappointed. Now this gun is capable of stacking BSA Gold Star pellets on top of each other at 25 meters. It does much the same at 30 meters, and it was still single holing at 40 meters. Now unfortunately, my main range testing day did coincide with a bit of breezy weather, so I couldn't push the accuracy testing to extreme range, but it was still clobbering reactive targets with 30 millimeter kill zones. So that is the BSA R12 CLX Pro. Now this air gun is designed and manufactured in Birmingham, and I understand that test guns have 50,000 shots run through them. Now if only everybody took quality control that seriously. In real terms though, this is a beautiful looking air gun that's built to last and performs brilliantly. And on top of that, it's just a really nice gun to shoot. Now, I am a big fan of the BSA R10, and this air gun is a more than worthy successor to that absolute classic. That's all we've got time for in this week's episode. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe and it means you won't miss a single episode. I'll be back with more in a fortnight and in the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.